The Holy Gospel is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory to you, O Lord. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Good friends in Christ, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Of course, we Lutherans are very big on grace. Grace is really at the core of all the things that we teach about God and in Jesus. It is the way in which God interacts with us. Grace is that gift that none of us can earn, and yet we receive from the Lord freely and without cost. I remember in Sunday school, my teacher using this phrase to teach us about grace, taking the first letter of each, the first, the letter of grace, and using it as the first letter of a sentence. He said, it is God's riches at Christ's expense. And that's true. Jesus wins for us salvation. He suffers on the cross and dies so that none of us have to bear the penalty for sin. If we would have to bear it, none of us would be able to stand. And so it is a good thing that we Lutherans are very grace-oriented Christians. For without grace, no one would have any hope. And of course, if we think about what grace is and to what extent it goes throughout God's creation, we have to give thought to things that we might not have ordinarily thought about. We might have to consider the possibility that grace extends to those whom perhaps we wouldn't even consider being worthy of grace. Today in the Gospel lesson, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. And the people are astounded at his teaching because he's not, as far as they can tell, a trained rabbi but they are grateful for his teaching. And as Jesus is teaching, a man who is possessed by a demon disrupts the synagogue, crying out to Jesus, saying to Jesus, I know who you are. You are the Son of God. Have you come here to torment us? That is often the case when a demon encounters Jesus. They recognize him for who he is. In fact, it's kind of amusing, especially in the Gospel of Mark, that hardly anybody understands who Jesus is, but the demons are quite clear. They know that Jesus is the Son of God. They know that they have no hope of standing against him, and so they always beg for some kind of mercy from Jesus. The only possible exception is the temptation by the devil in the wilderness before Jesus begins his public ministry, but all the other encounters, the demons in one way or another, are asking Jesus to let them go, to not destroy them. And it had never occurred to me until I was reading this text this past week that Jesus never does. He casts them out. He commands them to be silent. He sends them away. But never once in the whole of the New Testament, wherever Jesus encounters a demon or a devil, does he destroy the enemies of God. And if there is anyone who is an enemy of God, it would certainly be the devil and the demons. For they have rebelled against God, and the devil desires to be God himself and would throw God down from his throne if he had the chance. And yet none of that happens. Jesus does not destroy a single demon. You and I probably would if we had that kind of authority. <coughs> we would destroy evil to be rid of it forever. Because we see evil as irredeemable. 
We see evil as something that cannot be changed. We see evil as a threat to every good thing that there is in creation. And so if we had the power, if we had the authority, I know I would, and I suspect all of us would at least consider it, we would destroy the evil. But Jesus does not. And I had to ask myself, why does Jesus treat the demons this way? Why does Jesus show mercy to the demons when, if I were in his place, there would be no mercy? The truth of the matter is, if we understand grace to be what we believe it is, then that grace has to be offered to whomever seeks it. Not just you and I, but even the demons. Should they seek mercy and forgiveness from Jesus, they would receive it. And such is true of the most wretched of human beings. Should they repent of their sins and seek mercy and grace from God, they would receive mercy and grace. For grace is of such a nature that it redeems whomever seeks to be redeemed. And that's a challenge for us. Because it's real easy to say that the demons don't deserve grace. For they have fought against God for all eternity so far. And they give no indication that they want anything other than to supplant God or to cause those who believe in him harm. <coughs> and that is on the surface the truth. And perhaps most of them would never seek the mercy and grace of God. But simply because most of them would never seek does not mean that the mercy and grace of God is not there for them. And should even one demon decide that he wants to leave his life of hatred and rebellion against God and seek out the mercy that is his through Jesus Christ, he would be restored to heaven, just as you and I are restored to the Father through the dying and the rising of Jesus. That is the nature of grace. Grace redeems those who seek the Lord. Grace redeems those who recognize that their situation by themselves is hopeless that they cannot rid themselves of sin, that they cannot do enough to wash away the stain, that all of us, all of us, come before God with empty hands and with no hope of salvation unless it comes from outside of us. And it has. It has come through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And because of his dying and rising, even the most wretched of creatures can be redeemed. And that is the hope of the gospel. For it is the hope of the Father. It is the Father's fondest desire that the whole of his creation would be redeemed. As hard as it is for me to understand and believe, God has never stopped loving those demons who rebelled against him. They may hate him, they may rail against him, they may seek to do him all manner of harm, they may seek to wound him through crushing his church, but the Father has never ceased to love them. For if he has ceased to love the demons, then he will cease to love us too. But he does not look upon us because of our sin and rebellion. He does not consider the things that we have done wrong and hold them against us eternally. He has given his son to suffer and die for us. He has given Jesus to go to the cross and bear the weight of the sins of the whole creation. And that includes your sins and my sins, the sins of the most worthless human being, and yes, even the rebellion and sin of the demons. They all can be redeemed. We all can be redeemed. For Christ has suffered and died for the whole world as John records in his gospel, for God so loved the world. There are not footnotes with exclusions on that statement. It does not say, for God so loved the world, see footnote, and except for demons and most wretched human beings. It says the world. 
and the world includes everyone and everything in it. And so our fervent prayer as Christians, our hope, is not merely that we ourselves can have the forgiveness of sins and redemption. And not just the human race can be redeemed, but even the demons themselves can be redeemed and the whole of creation be restored to God. For that is what grace is truly about. Restoring the broken and the lost, the outcast, and yes, even the most hopeless and wretched of God's creatures. For that is the love of the Father. It is his love unbounding, so that Jesus would not cause a harm to a demon because there was still hope for them. And if there is hope for the demons, there certainly is hope for us. For such is the grace of God. Amen.